Okay, so this is the lesson that we were supposed to do today in class, but we got interrupted. Um, so on this page here, um, just read it through. This basically just is a quick summary of the steps that you need to take when working with fractions in terms of adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. Um, this is where we left off before you went to get your pictures. Um, so this question here, is there a difference? And the reason why this question comes up is it's often confusing for students when there's a negative sign in front of the fraction. So remember that the bar just means division. So negative 2 divided by 3 will end up being equal to negative 0.66666 repeating. If you punched in 2 divided by negative 3, that would also be equal to negative 0.66666 repeating. This last one's a little bit trickier. Um, when the negative's in front, often students get confused. They think that maybe it means that both the top and the bottom are negative. But if you think about that, if you think about this question down here, if both the top and the bottom were negative, that's actually going to be positive. So th what this means is it just means that the fraction happens to be negative. So it basically means figure out what 2 divided by 3 is, and then it just happens to be negative. So in fact, this one is also negative 0.666 repeating. So there actually is not a difference. Um, so these are all the same. And my recommendation to you, if, if you're confused, is to always put the negative on top. You don't have to do this, but I think for many of you, you're going to find it a lot easier to always put that negative sign on the top. Um, now, this one here, again, is confusing for students because they can think of it in two different ways. A lot of students think of it as negative 2 times 3, so here, and then plus 2, so then they add the top. And when they do that, they get negative 4, so they think that this equals negative 4 over 3. However, if you actually figured out what 2 and 2 thirds was, so 2, let's see, if you figured out what 2 and 2 thirds was, you would quickly realize that it is equal to 8 over 3. So negative 2 and 2 thirds then cannot be this one, it must be basically like this. So it's like you're figuring out what 2 and 2 thirds is, and then you're just putting the negative sign in. So it's just saying, guess what, I'm the same as 2 and 2 thirds, but I happen to be negative. So this is actually equal to negative 8 over 3, not negative 4 over 3. So just be really careful with converting a negative mixed number into improper. So let's look at some examples. When you are multiplying, remember you just multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms, or you can cancel things out if there are things to be canceled. Also, remember that a negative multiplied by a negative equals a positive. So here, if I wanted to, I can cancel. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. And then I just figure out negative 1 times 3 and 7 times negative 2. I'm going to end up with a positive answer, 3 over 14. If you got negative 3 over negative 14, you would make sure that you would simplify it to positive 3 over positive 14. If you don't want to cancel, that's fine. You multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, and then simplify. So if you don't cancel, you would end up with negative 12 over negative 56, but that would still simplify to positive 3 over 14. If we look at this next example, we're going to first always start by converting the mixed into improper. So again, remember this is 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9, and then it just happens to be negative, and we're going to throw that negative on top to make it easier. And then 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7 over 2. Then we look at it and we ask ourselves, is there anything that we could cancel? In this case, there is not. And we have a negative times a positive, so we know that we're going to get negative 63 over 8. And you're just going to leave your answer like that. You're not going to make it um, into a mix. You can leave it as an improper fraction as long as it is simplified. 
Um, for this one here, for part C, remember that when you are dividing fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So what that means is the division becomes multiplication and the reciprocal is 9 over 8. Then again, if we wish, we could cancel things or we can multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, and then simplify. So if we were canceling, we know that 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 8 twice. In this case, we have a negative times a positive, so we know that our answer will be negative. So we'll let, we're left with negative 9 over 14. Again, if you prefer, you can go straight to multiplying the tops and get negative 36 over 56 and then simplify. Um, for the last one, we're going to turn it into an improper fraction first. So 2 times 8 plus 1 is 17. So that will be negative 17 over 8. Again, be careful. It's not negative 15 over 8. And then we multiply by the reciprocal. Again, if we wish, we can cancel things out. And we can simplify. And we can leave it as an improper fraction. So when we look at powers, um, always ask yourself, what does an exponent mean? Remember, it means repeated multiplication. And the brackets mean that both the top and the bottom are going to be applied to that um, exponent. So this is an optional step. You do not have to show this. You can show that it means 2 over 3 times 2 over 3, and you get 4 over 9. Or you can go straight to the answer. Remember that it... Squaring does not mean 3 times 2, it means 3 times itself. Again, for this one, you can have an optional step of 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 times 1 over 4. Be careful, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, not 3. So a lot of people accidentally think that this might be 3. Um, and again, it's 4 times 4 times 4, not plus. If you want, you can go straight to that step there. And then the last thing is just adding and subtracting. My advice to you with adding and subtracting is to always put the negative sign on the numerator on the top. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. And the steps are the same. You're going to get a common denominator, and then you're going to add and subtract, and you're going to simplify. So here, a common denominator is 8. If you chose 16, that's also fine. Um, remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 4 is 4. Now, this is where it's a little bit tricky and some students make mistakes. Be really careful. This is negative 7 plus 4. It isn't 7 plus 4. So some people accidentally think this answer should be negative 11. But remember, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3 and then it's over 8. So just be really, really careful. Um, some of you might still need to practice your integers and um, get that app that I recommended if you're still struggling a little bit with adding and subtracting your integers. So this one we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get a common denominator, which will be 36. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So 4 times 9 is 36. So 3 times 9 is 27. And then 9 times 4 is 36, so 4 times 4 is 16. Now this one actually isn't that difficult um, because the first number is bigger than the second. But for those of you that want to, or if the second number were bigger, remember you always have the option of adding the opposite, and you can think of it that way. Um, so this answer is going to be um, 11 over 36. And then you'll leave your answer like this. The last one, again, whenever you have mixed fractions, always turn them into improper first. So 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9 over 4. And 3 times 8 plus 3 is 27 over 8. Now you're going to get a common denominator, which will be 8. And now you can subtract. And in this case, the second one is bigger than the first one. So again, if you would like, you can think of this as adding the opposite. And then you'll figure out that you're going to get negative 9 over 8, and you'll leave your answer like that. Uh, if you have any questions about this, um, please write them down, and then you can ask me uh, in class uh, tomorrow.